Good afternoon, everybody. Danny Jenkins here, CEO of ThreatLocker. I wanted to talk a little bit today about how built-in applications in Windows can be weaponized against you. If you're already a customer of ThreatLocker, you're very familiar with our application whitelisting, and the concept behind whitelisting is to stop untrusted software from running. A really great defense against stopping malware, but what it won't do is it won't stop somebody weaponizing an application that's built into Windows that is permitted against you. And there's a couple of ways this can be done. One way, which I'm going to show you today, is through the use of something called a rubber ducky. A rubber ducky, for those who don't know, is simply a, a keyboard disguised as a USB drive. It can also be disguised as a charging cable. So if you buy cheap charging cables on the internet, if you get those free ones at trade shows, be very careful. And when you plug them into your machine, it essentially sends a thousand key words a minute keystrokes to use one of your trusted applications against you. Now, there are other ways these attacks can be launched. They can be launched through macros in Word documents, through links in Word documents. Uh, last November, there was a vulnerability in Internet Explorer that allowed an attacker to launch PowerShell or PowerShell commands directly from the browser. Uh, Zoom had a vulnerability recently where you could launch PowerShell from Zoom. Uh, so there's lots of different ways these attacks can launch, but in this case, I'll use the rubber ducky. Essentially, what I'm going to do here, I've taken my computer into monitoring only mode, so nothing's going to get blocked. When I plug this in, it's going to send these keystrokes. It's going to send a control R command, launch PowerShell. And we can see here on the screen, it's typing these commands at a little less than a 1,000 words a minute. Uh, and it's worth noting, we can actually make this minimize so the user won't see it. And what it did there is it launched command prompt, which then launched PowerShell, which then started uploading my files. And within a few moments, we'll start seeing my files appear from my documents folder onto the Google Cloud repository I've got here online. And simply, other than that pop-up screen, which we could have hidden, the user doesn't know any difference. You've now copied their data. You could also download a payload. If you're not using whitelisting, potentially run malicious software. You could encrypt drives, turn on BitLock, or use other built-in tools. And if you think about when you go into your car dealer or your dental office or anywhere where you go and there's computers exposed and you see those USB ports, just think about how they're protecting those ports. Um, you'll notice here in ThreatLocker that when I ran that, the items were logged. Uh, they did hit a ring fence policy, but we are on monitor only, so nothing actually got denied. And we can see here that PowerShell essentially was accessing my files. And then we'll also note in the log that PowerShell talked to Google API to upload that data. So the question is, how can we stop this attack? Because essentially, an antivirus isn't really going to be able to do anything, or an EDR, unless it uses something it flags as suspicious. It's not very effective. The best way to stop this attack is to first of don't allow software that isn't trusted to run. If you don't need a piece of software in your environment, if you don't need PowerShell even, if a normal user doesn't need PowerShell, don't let them run PowerShell, and that's the safest state it can be in, denied. Now, of course, you can't always deny PowerShell. You can't deny every application on your system. But what you can do is you can limit what these applications do. So something like PowerShell needs to access a lot of high-performance system tools. But what it doesn't need to do is it doesn't need to access your documents folder. It doesn't need to access your network shares. And frankly, it doesn't need to go out to the internet, except maybe a couple of trusted sites like your RMM server or maybe Office 365. So if we can take those applications and we can ring fence them, and if you are using ThreatLocker and you don't already have those policies, you can very easily add them as a suggested policy here. But if we say here, OK, I've got PowerShell. It is ring fenced. I can stop it doing certain things. So in this case, I've said I don't want PowerShell to be able to call Internet Explorer or BitLocker. I don't want it to access any of my files, my documents, my network shares, unless I've explicitly created a bypass. A lot of people get concerned about this. And we have so few exceptions on this. I'd say less than half a percent of people put exceptions in there. And the third thing is, I don't want it to go to the internet except the site is listed below, which is none in this case. So I have that policy turned on. I'm just going to turn my computer out of monitor-only mode. And I'm going to give it about 30 seconds to deploy my policy so they can update. Now, while I'm waiting for that to deploy, the, we are demonstrating PowerShell here, but there are a lot of other tools in Windows, CScript, RunDLL, uh, uh, RegServe. These are incredibly dangerous tools that can all run remote code from remote repositories on the internet in protected memory on your machine and make it very hard to detect 
an AV or an EDR to detect it. So hopefully we've waited long enough here. So I'm just going to plug this back in again. Let's do the same command fire up again. And this time, I'm going, to try and, I'm going to delete these because I didn't delete them before I started, but we'll actually see them being denied in the audit here. So if we go back into the audit, and we can see here, you see this red ring fence, That's and we expand it, it essentially says that PowerShell tried to access the photo of my car, and it was denied because it doesn't need access to that file. If you're using ThreatLocker, it's worth spending 10, 15 minutes going through your policies, having a look at the applications and asking yourself which of these applications need to go out to the internet and which of these applications need to make registry changes and need to access my files. The files probably is the best starting point. It's very easy. Probably 80 to 90% of the applications you run do not need to access your documents or your network shares. If you're running games or even web browsers, most of them do not need to access network shares. Just check that box. Change it to permit with ring fence. Check the box. Look at our suggested policies as well. We've got quite a few suggested policies there that can help you lock down with relatively low impact. I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for listening.